Um, hi, everyone. My name is Dean McEwen. I'm the uh, director of the MMA Blended Program offered through Smith School of Business. So thanks a lot for taking time out of your day to uh, to come and listen to the webinar. Um, there is a uh, the Q&A button inside Zoom here. Please feel free to add questions as you come along. Um, if I happen to see one that's kind of relevant to the screen that I'm on, I'll try to answer it right away. If not, we'll try to answer it uh, towards the end of the webinar. Um, so just uh, just a refresh of this. This is for uh, Master of Management Analytics, which is a 12-month program, and we offer it in two formats, which I'll talk about shortly. So the first thing I want to do is um, actually do a, a land acknowledgement. Um, this is my personal land acknowledgement that, that uh, I did some a bit of research, and uh, I think it's really important that we include this. And so, you know, a land acknowledgement is, you know, it's a way where people can insert and build an awareness of Indigenous presence and land rights in our everyday lives. Um, they recognize the history of colonialism and First Nations, as well as a need for change in settler colony societies. Because I'm the director of the Blended Program, I started to research which Indigenous communities I should include in my land acknowledgement. Um, but our program actually involves students from across Canada. So we actually touch all three oceans in the current class, which is kind of cool. Um, and so I include this map um, on the, our our webinar here because it shows right um, the depth the breadth and the reach of indigenous communities across Canada and so what I I want you to do I want you to start thinking a little bit more critically and comprehensively about indigenous history and especially where we and you live learn and play and I would encourage you to discover which indigenous lands you live on and what do you actually know about that territory? What do you know about the Indigenous culture? For saying, you know, example, advanced traditions and that kind of stuff. Um, I also encourage everyone to read and develop an understanding of the 94 calls of action identified in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's findings. You know, I personally have made every effort to learn about these actions. And I know I can make a difference by supporting call number 57 which is about learning about Indigenous peoples, not only educating myself, but like this, encouraging others to learn as well. And I'm not an expert by any means, but I'm happy to share some of the resources that I've used in my own journey. Um, so you can just let me know if you're interested in doing that. And I also want to um, bring attention to the 93rd Call of Action, which asks newcomers to Canada to learn about the Indigenous people in Canada. And I would encourage you to learn about their traditions and the ways of knowing as you build a potential new life in Canada, because we do have a lot of international students um, joining our programs. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Smith School of Business and our analytics ecosystem. So we actually have um, not only professional master's programs, but we do a lot of research in the school as well. So we have both an MSc in analytics and a PhD. We offer executive education programs. We have applied research labs and centers like our Scotiabank Center for Customer Analytics. We have, of course, our MMA program. And for those of you who are a little bit technically minded, uh, we have our Master's of Management in Artificial Intelligence. So there's lots of different ways of getting involved with Smith, not only taking programs, but supporting uh, the research that we do and research grants and internships um, projects, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so what is this degree? So the MMA degree is, we consider it to be the business degree for today's managers. So you will get a full master's degree in 12 months. Uh, you can expect a lot of academic rigor. We have exams, assignments, team projects, and presentations. Uh, it's a lot of work in a very short period of time. And so, you know, realistically, you can expect anywhere between 14 and 20 hours a week of schoolwork um, beyond your regular day job, right? Most of our students are working full time as they take the program. And so this is an additional piece on top of that. And uh, it's tough. It's not a rubber stamp program by any means. Uh, you will have to work very hard to do it. 
it's also very difficult to get into these programs as well. So, um, and one of the big significant pieces about our program is that it's a team-based program. And I'm sure you think you know what that means, but I can assure you, you don't. Um, the team's function at Queen's is very different than any other team's um, program literally around the globe. I've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, and so you will be immersed in that sort of team-based function of the program. And teams are extremely important because about 50% of all your academic work will be team-based or teamwork. And so you have to be able to work with other people and have to want to work with other people um, to be successful in the program. And as part of that team base, we actually give every team a coach. And these are what we call high-performing team coaches. And those coaches are available to you throughout the program as well and to help you through and develop these relationships to become very successful. Um, our uh, MMA program is now available in two delivery formats. So we have our in-person in Toronto uh, MMA classes, and we also have now the new blended program of which I am the director of. Okay, so well, I'm just going to give you a, a quick little lesson in analytics and, and what we're trying to do in this program as well. Um, this is what, what I, you know, for lack of a better term, we're in two, two dimensions here. So it's supposed to be like a pyramid. Um, and we need the strong foundations uh, to build success in an analytics environment. So the first thing we'll start off and something we focus on in the program as well is how to verify and trust the data that you're working on. Because if you haven't got verified and trusted data, then the rest of the pyramid is gonna crumble very quickly. The other pieces, there's four different types of analytics that we're gonna talk uh, about in the program. And now, None of them takes priority over the others, and none is more important than the others, um, but they're equally important to the digital transformation and automated decision making, which is where we want to get. And as we progress and as research begins, artificial intelligence and automated decision making just continues to happen at a very rapid pace. But without that verified and trusted data, you can't think about offering a computer system to make decisions for you without knowing that those are the right decisions. So we'll talk about that in this program as well. Now, what is analytics? So I talked about four progressive types. Um, we'll start with uh, descriptive analytics. And descriptive analytics is like your dashboard, right? What happened? Uh, how many widgets did we produce this month? Um, we're, we as people and as organizations are never happy with what just happened. We wanna know what's going to happen. So that's where we get into predictive analytics and predictive modeling, and that helps to model out what will happen. The problem with predictive analytics is that all of a sudden a pandemic comes along and all the models that you've built and all the processes you've developed um, are no longer relevant because the world has changed dramatically. And so things have to be changed again. And so this is why we want to kind of push things to what we'll call prescriptive analytics. And prescriptive analytics is how do we make sure it happens? So for example, if I want to develop or build X number of widgets per month, and I've been doing that, but I want to increase production by 20%, I'm going to model that out because that prediction is going to be very good for the company, can help us with our profits. We wanna make sure that happens. So what happens to that? Well, we know through prescriptive analytics that we would probably have to increase our capacity by 30% to increase 20% production. And that was what we get into prescriptive analytics. Prescriptive analytics is really about optimization, right? Looking at that data, trying to figure out what we can do today to make sure things happen tomorrow. And um, prescriptive analytics is extremely important in things like pricing analytics, which we have a whole course in pricing. And when you think about uh, probably the most popular or known use of prescriptive analytics is actually like hotel room pricing and airline pricing, that kind of stuff that fluctuates literally on a minute by minute basis, depending on the supply and demand that shows in the data that gets there. And so that's become very effective for those you know, the, in tourism and stuff on how to make sure you're guaranteed every seat is sold before that plane takes off. And then ultimately we want to get to cognitive analytics, which is about self-learning, machine learning, automated artificial intelligence, where you don't need people to intervene in these things. You want people to just sit back, watch it happen, 
And then the computer system actually makes these decisions for you because we know that they can make them much faster than we can. They can analyze the data in real time. They can adjust the prices in real time, for example, and then your system is gonna be that much better um, situated and more efficient. So inside that program, once we've covered all that, that's sort of the technical side of things of what's going on in the MMA program. Um, but our structure itself, we're a little bit different, right? So we are a business school that offers a fairly technical program. There is coding in this program. You will have to write Python code to be successful in this program, but that is not the real emphasis, right? We're not, we haven't created this program to develop a whole bunch of programmers. What we want you to do is solve problems, okay? Businesses all have problems that need to be solved. And so we want our students to be able to think about that. Think about what is the problem? What is the root cause analysis of this problem? Develop a hypothesis, then think about the algorithms, the data, and whatever analytics you're going to do on that. Because what we want is to get some insights from the data. And we can use those insights to make a decision that's going to help us solve that problem. Okay, so that's the loop function that we're in here is that we wanna start with a problem and we want insights from the data to solve that problem. But the, the reality is, right, when you're looking at analytics and you're looking at any kind of quantitative science, if you can't explain and talk to people and work with people, then your analytics and your best models that you've developed are gonna be sitting on a hard drive somewhere and never get used. So it's really important for people to learn how to work with people. We are very focused in this program about developing business leaders. So we're gonna give you that kind of experience through the teams and the team coaching to make sure that you are very effective working with different people, whether it's one-to-one, one-to-many, or pitching to executives, that sort of thing. That is very important to becoming successful as a leader in analytics and digital transformation in your organization. And that's a real focus of this program. Now, how do we do that? And these are the courses that we offer in the program. So we start with what we call method courses, where we teach you how to do analytics. We'll teach you that technical component. And then we have what we call application courses. So how do you apply that knowledge to marketing, to supply chain, to finance? And then we have a couple of electives. So they're gonna help you choose sort of your path or where do you see yourself? Do you like the more entrepreneurship and innovation side of things? Or are you more, a little bit more corporate and you're looking for traditional project leadership in the analytics space? And then we have what we call power skill courses. And these power skill courses are right um, from our business school curriculum. Um, they're non-quantitative, but they're very important for you to be a successful leader in analytics. And so you look at AI and ethics, leading change, which is about change management. Today's business world is all about change and being able to understand that. And of course, for those of you who don't have a business degree, we have an introduction to management course to get you up, up to snuff on what's going on in business. How do you teach business? How do you do case studies? That kind of stuff. Um, now, the program structure itself, we have two formats, as I mentioned earlier on. We have an in-person format in Toronto. Uh, that program actually has two start dates, okay? So you can start in either January or April of each year. Now, this we're both full um, for uh, January in-person format, January 2023 start. That program is full, so you'll be interested in applying to either the April 2023 start, so that will be the next one available to you, or a January 2024 start, uh, for those of you who want a little more time to sort of get up to uh, a good basis of understanding of programming, that kind of stuff. Uh, the in-person format in Toronto, you basically have a class one night every week. So for example, every Wednesday night, you'll have class from 5.30 to 9.30, and then one weekend day, bi-weekly, for the full 12 months, okay? So every other weekend, you'll be downtown Toronto, either on a Saturday or a Sunday, and have a full day of a course. Um, our Toronto location is right across the road from the Metro Toronto Convention Center. So it's in a great convenient location to like to go, the subway, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so it's very easy to get to. 
and it's got full amenities in there with you know we offer coffee pop all that kind of fun stuff to make your learning experience a little bit better and then we also offer two one week what we call residential or opening and and elective sessions at queens in kingston now i want to emphasize that this is the very first session the opening session is when you get introduced to your teams and your team structure so that is a requirement you must come to kingston for that first week um, and learn about teams and take the first intro to management course during that week as well and some stats in 863 so that is mandatory and then in the in-person format we have what we call an electives week as well i think it's in may or june depending on the calendar um, but again that is required you have to come to kingston for that one week session to take that elective course. And then as mentioned earlier, we have ongoing coaching, there's networking and there's full career support for people in the Toronto program as well as you go forward. Now the blended learning format, which we've been running for a couple of years, uh, we only have one start date for it, it is January. And again, the January, 2023, is now full so we're recruiting now for january 2024 um, i do encourage if you're interested in the blended learning format it has turned out to be very popular so i would definitely encourage you to start your application as quickly as possible to get in there because um, i did fill up we did have a wait list uh and the, we had a wait list i think started in september this year so it is very important to get on top of that and get your application in uh, it's called blended uh, because it's, it is a blend of there's some online learning pieces on there and there's also live online classes. Again, the program lasts for 12 months, starts in January, finishes in December. Um, and basically, as long as you have Internet access, you can do this from anywhere in the world. And I have students currently across Canada from British Columbia to Newfoundland, uh, up north into the Yukon. Um, but also uh, students learning from um, Nigeria, from Saudi Arabia, from China. Uh, we've got people all over the world taking this program. And, um, but again, there are these two opening sessions or opening and closing sessions that are mandatory. So even though you might be in Saudi Arabia, you will actually have to travel to Queen's University in Kingston for a one week session at the end of January um, to again get placed into your teams and take a couple of courses as well. So that's really important to realize that these are mandatory sessions you must come. And then the blended program, we have what we call a closing session in Toronto in December. Uh, we just had it two weeks ago for the current class. And again, we're taking a full course, the Leading Change course 804 is offered during that week. And um, as you can imagine, it's the end. So it's a bit of a, a celebration uh, of people getting together, getting to see each other face-to-face -face after a, you know, a long and busy 12 months um, and having some fun. The blended learning program, just like the in-person one, has ongoing coaching, <clears throat> there's full networking and career support for that program as well. Okay, and it's not all just fun and games. We get into some programming languages and some tools as well. Um, and it'll be, we're gonna focus primarily on Python going into the new year, um, but we also have access to other tools like Databricks and Snowflake, Microsoft Azure, Tableau. Um, you will be programming in SQL. Um, SAS is always there. It's um, SAS will be found in, in most um, large corporations around the world. So SAS certification is extremely important. R is not used that much anymore. There's de definitely been a big push into Python, but um, R language, you'll probably see that in a couple of the courses as well. Okay, and then who's going to be teaching you all this stuff? So we are very fortunate at Smith. Um, we've been running the MMA program um, for 10 years now. So uh, we've got a lot of experience teaching analytics and working with business leaders in the analytics space in the digital transformation space. And so we've got exceptional faculty and adjunct faculty from, fact, from industry coming in to help us with this. So you're gonna see um, you know, these faces for sure 
uh, as they teach in the program. They all have exceptional academic credentials. Uh, the majority of them are tenure track faculty members. So going back to my second screen about MSCs and PhDs, uh, we do a lot of original research uh, in the analytic space and in machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. Um, always from a business perspective, but that knowledge and that research is there and they'll be bringing that into the classroom as well. And then we've got this uh, a great uh, analytics and AI advisory board. So Mark Schaefer from the Walt Disney Company, he is our chair of the board. Um, and, uh, you know, Gary and Lori are there as well. They head up different committees on our board. And these people really sort of honestly keep us honest, right? They they actually tell us what's going on in the industry. They say, these are the skills that are needed. You know, do we need Python? Do we need R? Do we need to think about Snowflake? Those kinds of things. And these people will keep us um, up to date on what's going on in industry so that we can adjust our courses and our program to make sure that we meet the needs of employers so that you as a student are really well prepared to get out there and work for large financial institutions or you know um, consumer focused organizations and CPG uh, insurance, all that kind of stuff. So the advisory board has been extremely helpful to us for uh, the past 10 years. Now, as a student, what happens to you, right? What kind of experience are you actually going to have? So we realize that we can't fit all the things that we would like you to learn in a 12 month master's program. So we do actually offer a number of professional workshops that are sort of outside the curriculum, but closely related to. So we have professional type ones, like having difficult conversations, uh, communications in general. Um, we have technical workshops and supporting you and learning how to do Python, SQL, Tableau, and SAS. There's a number of clubs and student initiatives that you can get involved in. There's a student leadership opportunities for every cohort has a student leadership or a student government um, that you can volunteer and be involved with to help out not only the social aspects of the class, um, but also in uh, you know act as I go between between industry people and what's going on in the class as well. We have and especially um, once you graduate from this program and like most business schools in Canada around the world we have a tremendous alumni network and so we actually have what we call a business club in analytics and AI and there's a, a subgroup of that called women in analytics as well. So you know, once you're a student, you get access to some of their talks and their panels and that kind of stuff. But once you're finished the program, that learning still continues through the uh, analytics and AI alumni group. Um, and then we also have um, a cross program initiatives, right? So we have our Scotiabank Center for Customer Analytics, which both runs workshops and talks, community seminars, uh, and opportunities to work with different types of data sets and stuff. We have QAF, which has become very popular. Um, it's a Queen's University Alternate Asset Fund. So if you think about you know, playing with real money and investing it uh, and seeing how it goes, and you can see the analytics piece on that has become very important. And we also have another cross-program club called Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. And again, that's a, a, you know, a cross-program group. So you'll be working with MBA students, uh, master finance students, master of international business students, all that group. And then they run a number of talks and workshops around equity, diversity, and inclusive as well. Okay, so what does your class look like? So interestingly enough, both the, the blended program and the in-person program, these kind of demographics are almost exactly the same. Uh, we're looking at you know an average age of around 32, but there's a range there from 22 to 52. If you think about the younger people, they come in with great technical acumen. Um, they know how to program. They've been doing that for a long time. And then you look at the other end is the 52 year old comes in with the political know-how, the business acumen, right? They know how to get these things done. And so you put these two people on a team together and all of a sudden you get that great diversity of thought, right? And you get these different approaches on how to solve these business problems. So it really makes for a very strong student team experience. Uh, average work experience, seven to eight years. You've got 
um, three years of management experience on average. Um, but there is always a great diversity in terms of industry representational, educational backgrounds, work experience of people. And we actually look for that in the recruitment process. We want to be um, making sure, right, that we have that diverse class so people can talk about things because, you know, data like problems can be interpreted very differently by different people. Okay, and our career management network. So as a student, we understand fully that people are taking these programs with uh, a certain intent. And we call this the career management network because it's not just about jobs, right? It's about establishing your path for the career that you want to do. So inside that, we do have a job board and we do have a lot of workshops on you know, how to write a resume, how to do a cover letter, how you do interviews. Um, a lot of tech companies have some funky interviews these days, so you want to be well prepared for those. Um, but it's really about the career, okay? And we do have career coaches. So even if you're really happy with your current role or your current company, but you want to see progression within the company, still make a, an appointment with our coaches and ask them about that. And they can give you some advice. They'll run you through some sort of personality-like tests on you know where you should go and what you should do, your strengths, your weaknesses and stuff. And they can really help you build out your career and understand what kind of skills you're going to need to be successful to get to that goal. If you want to be a CEO, there's certain things you're going to have to do um, to develop yourself to make sure that you're ready for that role and you get recognized for it as well. Okay, and during the program too, there are other personal certifications. Now, I'm gonna clarify this with um, the fact that the program itself, just by taking the program, will not give you the certification in SAS, in forms, or PMI. What we do is we provide you some academic components towards those certifications. There's always going to be more that you have to do on an individual basis to do that. So for example, your um, the certified analytics professional and the SAS certification do require you to write exams. Um, the project management professional requires you to work and get that experience in project management before you can get certified. So we'll give you some academic credits towards that, but you will have to actually do the work to get it. So that's pretty important to understand. And getting down to our admission requirements. So our admission requirements are the same for both in-person and the blended program. So it's exactly the same. There's nothing different there. Uh, it is degree. So you do need to have an undergraduate degree from a recognized university. That degree, we want to be able to see the mathematics or stats courses that cover things like linear regression and how to apply that. Okay. Um, and then ultimately, we are looking for a pretty good grade in that course. Um, probably nothing lower than a B without a really good explanation. Um, and we may ask you to do some additional work to show that you can still do the stats piece. Uh, this is a professional master's program, so we do want our students to have some work experience. So a minimum of two years work experience is going to be required. And we will be hoping for or looking for some analytics experience in that as well. So you might actually find someone who, you know, if you look at it on paper, they might have actually less than two years of work experience, but they likely have um, several internships that have been done in an analytics space. So we are looking for that work experience before because we want to have that discussion in our classes. We want to be able to have everybody participate and everybody contribute to those discussions about what's going on with analytics in that organization. Uh, we do require everybody to have two letters of reference as well. Uh, and we'll need un official transcripts from your undergraduate institution. If your undergraduate institution is not in Canada, then we will be looking for a full West assessment of that transcript as well. And so that will be required um, before you get admission to the program. On top of that, again, we're business oriented, right? So we're looking for a resume and cover letter. And the cover letter should cover things about why. Why, who are you, why are you interested in analytics, and why do you want to join our program? And then uh, when it gets to the very bottom, there's going to be an interview. An interview is usually with the program director, 
Um, so for instance, if you're doing blended, uh, the program, uh, I will be the one who interviews you. It's uh, for me anyway, it's about anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the discussion. Um, and it's just to, to make sure that you're going to be a good fit for the program itself. Um, don't start the GMAT. I know a lot of uh, business schools um, still require a GMAT and a GMAT score, including some of the programs we offer here at Smith. Um, but what we found is the GMAT is not actually um, indicative of success in the program. So it's really important that you talk to us first um, before you start the GMAT. I'd much rather have you learning um, Python and SQL than studying for a GMAT. Okay, now what is this application process looking like? So what we'll do is we'll start you off with, um, uh, well, we have application advisors, we also have uh, what we call recruitment advisors. Um, the recruitment advisor, so once you submit a transcript, and it can be an unofficial transcript at the beginning, plus your resume, okay, we will consider you no longer an inquiring to the program, we'll actually make you an applicant. And then once you've been made an applicant, then we're gonna do a preliminary assessment and we're going to assign you an application advisor. So particularly, this is Betsy Smith um, who couldn't join us today, um, but Betsy will literally guide you through the process of the entire application. And she will make sure that your application is strong enough to be successful. So once you get to the interview process, um, you know, you're, you're pretty far along and you're probably in pretty good shape. Uh, so basically, they're, they're your advocate, okay? So it's important to make sure that Betsy's your friend uh, as you go through this process. And it's also very important that uh, when Betsy is sort of requesting documents or information from you, that you follow up with her on a timely basis because everything is sort of monitored and, and we kind of manage that flow very carefully. And like I said, these are very popular programs. So it's, it's important to sort of get through that process. Make sure you hand in your documents when they're needed and you order, like if you think about the sort of the, the slow things, right? The slow things are your official transcript from your undergraduate institution and your reference letters. Those are the potential bottlenecks. And so it's really important to get on top of that very early in the process so that we have that information to be able to send out and offer. Because what we do is, we it's something a little bit different than a lot of graduate programs, but we do what we call rolling admission. <clears throat> so there's no actual cutoff dates. The only real cutoff date is the day of the program starts, right? That's really the last time that you can get admission to the program. Um, but we do tend to fill up so and, and get wait lists. So uh, it's really important. We never know exactly when that's going to happen. Um, but for this current class, that's it's going to be starting in January 2023, the blended program, we had a wait list as of uh, like the end of September. So um, it is really important to sort of stay on top of that. If you're looking to start the program at the next beginning point, um, you really have to get going on that. Now, this is another option um, that we leave in here. It's a bit of a strange option. I'm going to admit that. So EDX, um, they have what they call a micro master's program in statistics and data science. So we've been working with the MITx people um, to develop this as what we'll call a pathway into our MMA program. Now, what this does, if you complete the MITx micro master's program in statistics and data science, you will get advanced credit for two of our courses. So you won't have to take MMA 863, the Introduction to Analytical Modeling, or MMA 867, Predictive Modeling. And by not having to take those two courses, you will then have a reduction in your program fees that equals those two courses. Now, the reason I say it's kind of weird is because the MicroMasters itself takes two years to complete. It's also fairly expensive and paid for in, in American dollars. So our entire master's program only takes 12 months. Um, and when you look at exchange rates and that kind of stuff, um, 
you know, it's, I think you get a better return on your investment by just jumping into the MMA program um, than doing the MicroMasters program first and then the MMA program. But again, this is something that uh, is personal to a lot of people. So I'll leave it at that, but um, I'm happy to talk to you about that further offline if you're interested. Now, these are the, uh, the fees um, for the current class. Um, domestic students pay $43,840 Canadian. International students pay $79,900 Canadian. Uh, that amount is what we call program fees. So that includes your tuition, your books, all your learning materials, your meals and accommodations for our opening and closing sessions, all the software licenses, access to Snowflake and Databricks, and basically that amount is paid for in a deposit to get you as an enrolled student and then three installment payments over the year that you are actually in the program itself. So hopefully um, this program is actually also uh, approved for OSAP in Ontario, the Ontario Student Assistance Program. And because it's accessible or it's OSAP approved, that generally means that it's also approved for other provincial student assistant programs. So if you're in British Columbia or Alberta or Manitoba, for example, uh, you would have access to the student assistance programs as well. You still have to apply through and get approved, um, but in general, this program should qualify for that. Now, alternate um, financing options as well. Um, we do have a relationship with RBC uh, where you can get a student line of credit for domestic students. Now, I'm going to qualify that again and say pretty much every major Canadian bank offers a student line of credit. And so you might or may or may not get a better deal or interest rates, whatever payment schedule um, from your own personal bank than you would from RBC. So I definitely encourage you to, again, look at multiple banks. And, and see what kind of opportunities are there for you. Uh, as mentioned earlier, it's OSAP eligible. You can uh, borrow from your RSPs as part of the lifelong learning plan tuition tax credits system under CRA. And so I encourage you to look into that. Um, there are some scholarship opportunities. They are quite limited. Um, the, in these specialized master's programs, the um, scholarship environment is a little bit different than what you may have heard from people who have taken MBA programs. Um, and so uh, just be mindful of that. Um, but they're usually around, you know, $2,000 per person. Um, and they're based on academic qualifications. So we'd be looking at super high GPAs um, in order to get that kind of a scholarship. We also have a couple of entrance scholarships for Black and Indigenous students um, to help them and support them in joining our program as well. And so they have a specific call for apply applications for the, those programs, uh, and they happen once a year. So it's really important to kind of keep on tabs of that. And again, it's also important to, to apply and be enrolled in the program in order for you to apply um, for that Black and Indigenous student scholarships. Each year, the Vector Institute in Ontario <clears throat> offers um, a, the Vector Institute for Artificial Intelligence Scholarship. And so um, that is it. it. It's extremely, extremely competitive. Um, but again, so if you have super high grades and you're in artificial intelligence in both MMA and MMAI, um, you'll qualify for that. <clears throat> now, um, application timing uh, as of today. So basically, um, as of this week, actually, we are full for um, January 2023 start dates for both blended and in-person. It's really important if you're interested in doing the in-person start date for April that you get your application in ASAP. Um, the April 23 start for international students uh, is about to close at the end of the month. So if you're an international student and you want to do the spring start, you got to get that application in as quickly as possible and complete. And then we are accepting applications for the January 2024 start in both the blended program 
and the um, in-person Toronto program. Okay, and the ultimate thing um, that you know I would sort of reiterate is that analytics, it's about business, okay? We know and we've seen over the past 10 years that tremendous business value can be derived through the use of analytics and discovering those insights that help organizations make the right decision. And so that's the fundamental piece of this program is it's about business and it's about business value. Analytics will, you know, it's great. It's great to have the quantitative piece and the quantitative knowledge and to be able to write Python code and that kind of stuff. But to be truly successful in business and I would argue successful in your career as a business leader, right? You need those strong power skills that we cover in the program as well. Things like developing vision, strategy, leadership, change management, uh, collaborating effectively through our team's environment and understanding the digital culture of your organization as well is going to be extremely important for your success as an individual, but also for success of not only companies and businesses, but also for our society in general. Uh, we can't be wasting resources um, by doing things inefficiently, right? And not knowing what's going on and not predicting properly. So it's really important that we sort of figure this out, get the data that we need and start doing some nice predictive modeling and some analytics so we're making the right decisions. Okay, so then the next question is, are you ready? Are you ready to join this program and, and make a significant difference in the future of, you know, I would argue society itself. And this is my contact information. So again, my name is Dean McEwen. I'm the director of the MMA Blended Program. Um, that QR code is my LinkedIn. Um, feel free to, to connect with me on LinkedIn. It'd be great to hear from you there. And um, I usually post and repost a lot of different things about analytics that's going on in not only in Canada, but around the world. And i um, happy to, to hear your thoughts on that. And then that's it for the official part. So let me just take a look at some questions here. I've got uh, Ryan Hill, our, um, our recruitment advisor, has been helping me out here. He's been answering some questions as we go along. Um, but I've got one question here that I will answer live here. So if an applicant already has a master's degree in a different discipline, um, do we send our bachelor's or master's transcript? So basically what we would be looking for is all the official transcripts for both degrees. It's always most important to have the most recent one. That would be the, the minimum requirement. Um, but I think if you were, you know, if your undergrad transcript was good enough to get your master's degree, you may want to include that as well because it can only strengthen your, your application. But the master's one would be sufficient. And again, if you're an international student, we would want the full West assessment um, of those transcripts. Now, what type of recruitment opportunities are there as part of the program? So are there on-campus recruiting events? Um, so um, for both uh, in-person, and for blended, we actually do run networking events all uh, quite often, um, both online and in person. Um, during our closing session for the MMA blended program, we had a very successful networking event and we also had company visits as well. Uh, and so those things happen. There's a very substantial job board uh, you know, that you can apply for. Um, there's a lot of companies coming to us. There's a huge demand for anybody with analytic skills especially the know-how we've we've got you know honestly a, a pretty good reputation out there for uh, developing excellent analytics managers and so uh, companies are coming to us all the time um and again you know i have my my linkedin qr code there i would encourage you to hop on linkedin um, do a quick search for smith school of business and the mma degree and you'll be able to see um the people that have graduated from the program and the beauty of linkedin is it's like a resume for everybody right you can actually see people's career progression from when they graduated um to where they are today and 
you can see the opportunities are there. And you can see also a lot of our MMA grads are actually hiring people now to support their organization. So uh, you'll see a lot of the job opportunities some there as well. Okay. Uh, Samuel asks here, do I need to have background knowledge and programming to get admission? <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll give you um, access to Udemy once you are enrolled in our programs, we'll give you a Udemy license. And then we'll ask you to learn stats. There's different skill paths they call it. So there's a statistics one, there's a Python one, and there's a SQL one. So we're gonna expect you to do those before the program starts. So do you have to have, let's say five years of program experience? Not at all, um, but you do have to know enough. Now, the thing about programming is that when you get into a course, right, that's going to have a programming assignment, if you are completely unfamiliar with programming at the start of that course, you'll be forced into a situation where you're learning how to program at the same time as you're learning the course content. And that could make you a very, very busy person, right? When you're trying to do both things at the same time. We always wanna encourage people to learn as much about Python programming specifically, and also some SQL programming before, the program, before our courses actually start so that you can focus on the course content and you'll have a pretty good underlying or fundamental knowledge of how to do Python programming as well. The, um, the, the program itself, it's a team-based program, right? And so you're going to have some programmers who are probably on the team that are gonna be able to help you through, but don't rely on that because the individual assignments that you'll be working on, you're gonna to have to code that yourself. And it's really important to have that fundamental understanding. So don't take that for credit that you may or may not have some knowledge it's really important that you do practice. Uh, <clears throat> can, uh, um, can business courses be waived to complete an MBA? Nope. Um, this program is getting back to the team-based part of this program. You get put onto a team at the beginning of the program and you work with that team. So you are taking the full curriculum with everybody else, um, regardless of what other courses you're done. All of our courses are geared towards analytics, okay? So that's a key difference between any kind of course you would take with an MBA program, um, because there's probably very little analytics in those programs. Um, and so it's important that you understand that these courses are significantly different than what you would have done before. So you have to do them both. Uh... Okay. Would courses we've taken at a different university after undergraduate also be considered in the application? Yeah. So any kind of knowledge you have <clears throat> for uh, around the space of analytics, computer programming, statistics, mathematics, all that kind of experience is very helpful in our um, in your application process. Uh, what's the strength of Smith compared to other business schools? Well, um, talking to a Smith person, I'd say we're number one in the country, of course, but um, I think if you look at, well, let's say specifically in the analytics space, because that's what we're talking about here, um, we have upwards of, doing a quick count in my head, uh, about 300 graduates of our MMA and MMAI programs um, every year. And we've been running MMA for 10 years. I don't think, well, in fact, I know that you're not going to find another business school in Canada with that kind of legacy um, and that kind of an alumni network out there. So um, again, if you want to look at individuals, uh, LinkedIn's the, the perfect place. Take a look, take a look at all the grads from Smith who have done the MMA degree and see where they are today. Uh, you'll be absolutely amazed at uh, the careers that people have had and the successes that they've had as well. All right. <clears throat> do you have to apply specifically to the in-person versus blended? Uh, no, you do have to choose. Right from the very beginning, you'll have to select whether you're in-person or blended, um, only because we have different directors for each cohort. And uh, we do have the same application advisor, so it's still Betsy. 
and we have Ryan as our recruitment advisor. Um, but once you get sort of deeper into the application process, it goes to different directors. And, um, and so we are looking to build different cohorts as well. So for me, it's really important that um, I have students from across Canada, right? So I wanna be able to see people from BC and the, from Yukon and Newfoundland and all that kind of stuff. And so I recruit specifically for that diversity and the, the diversity of thought and diversity of industry as well. And so it makes for a different applicant pool um, than it would for the Toronto in-person one. Okay. Um, is it advantageous for a business student who has an undergraduate degree in business and no work experience in analytics? Uh, will Google Analytics certification make a difference? Um, again, any kind of analytics experience is going to help strengthen your application. Um, is it enough? Um, that really depends on the cohort and the applications that are coming in. Uh, an undergraduate degree in business is good because you we know you've done stats, you know you've done probably calculus as well, and you understand fundamentally how businesses work and how that operates. And again, looking for case studies and root cause analysis and that kind of stuff. So that's very helpful. Um, so, you know, that's good. But see, the secret here uh, really about applying to these programs is you start the process and you work with Betsy on a one-to-one -one, because Betsy's going to help you develop the best application, right? And then the strongest application for the program. So you work with Betsy, you give her your, your initial documents, a resume, cover letter, transcript. Betsy will do that preliminary assessment and let you know that, oh, your GPA is kind of low. You might think about wanting to do the GMAT to boost it up. Or she might come back and say, oh, I don't see any programming in here. Have you done any programming? You think, oh, yep, I forgot to add that into my resume. So then you can add your resume. You can update that, add it, give it to her. And so she, again, will do another preliminary assessment and say, okay, this is looking better now. Let's think about this. Have you done that? Uh, and so she can help you, guide you through to make sure that that's the strongest application. So when she books or helps you book an interview with me, uh, you're all set, ready to go. There's no surprises for you or me because Betsy has guided you through that. The, uh, the application advisors are a tremendous asset for applicants as they're going through this. Okay, and I don't see any other questions and we're just pushing up to the hour. Oh, we got a couple, couple last minute ones. <clears throat> Is there an option of doing a, a PhD? Yeah, definitely. We've got about, um, I'm trying to think of how many people, probably like six or seven students have done an MMA and gone into the PhD program here at Smith. Now, the MMA program is a professional master's, right? So it's course-based, so you don't have that original research piece that you would normally have when you're going from an MSc to a PhD. So you will have to take some like research methodology courses before you actually get into the PhD. Now, the other thing about a PhD program at Smith is it is a full-time program. So there will be even a bigger taxing sort of time commitment for doing a PhD. Um, but as you know, um, you know, the PhD, the course is the first two years of a PhD. So you'll have to travel to Kingston, take those courses in person. Um, but once you're working on your research and your thesis and that kind of stuff, you can pretty much be anywhere, but you have to be in contact with your supervisor on a very regular basis. So if you can make that work and you can find a supervisor and you're researching an interesting topic in analytics or AI or ethics, whatever it is, um, you can definitely do a PhD. Uh, what are we mainly doing in Kingston sessions? So the, the very first session, uh, the primary thing is you get put into your teams. So you learn about what it takes to be in a high performing team. You get to learn your, who your teammates are. You get to be introduced to your coach. And so you get that sort of environment. And then once you get that established, then you jump right into a course. So we have our 801 introduction to management with uh, Gary Bissonette. So he teaches that course during that week. 
And then this is where it differs between blended and in-person, um, but you do do some of the MMA 863 coursework during that week as well. So that's our basically our introduction to analytic modeling uh, or stats course. And so you'll get a piece of that as well. So it is a very, very busy week. Um, you'll be thrown into it, learning about your teams, taking a couple of courses, doing some assignments, some presentations. Um, but we also do some social things in there as well. There's always lots of good food to be had. And there's some networking as well with people. And we usually bring in guest speakers and panelists and that kind of stuff during that week. So um, we'll keep it very, very busy for when you get here to when you leave. Uh, you'll be sleeping on the train on the way home. Okay. And how does the Capstone project work with the blended program? So the Capstones, um, oh, wait a minute. Ryan's got that. So I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, another person says, can I apply to two programs? So you can start, uh, or let's say we'll inquire about two programs. And then once you've had that conversation with the application advisor, uh, then you will have to make a decision of which one you're actually going to apply to. Okay, so you can't really have two open applications to two different programs. Okay, 12.58, I think we're just at our time. Um, uh, you're welcome, Philip. There's, um, so anyway, this is uh, recorded. Uh, we do post it on our YouTube channel, uh, so it should be there probably in a couple of days. Uh, but again, you've got my contact information there. You know, don't hesitate to uh, send me an email or connect over LinkedIn, and I'd be happy to uh, to chat with you about stuff in the future and your application to the program. All right, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, have a good holiday season.